Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at multiplying and dividing complex numbers. Now, all of us know how to go about multiplying complex, multiplying and dividing complex numbers when it's in its Cartesian form. What we also want to be able to do is multiply and divide complex number when complex numbers when they are in their polar form. So we're going to take a look at three properties. These are they. Assuming that z sub one is going to be equal to cis theta sub one and z sub 2 is equal to cis theta sub 2, then basically what we're looking at then is we're saying z sub 1 times z sub 2, or the product of those two complex numbers, is actually very nicely going to be cis of theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2. The quotient is actually going to look at like cis of theta sub 1 minus theta sub 2, and cis of theta plus 2 pi k is going to be equal to cis theta where z, where k is an element of z. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at these proofs in class. What we want to focus on right now is how are we going to remember these properties and also how can we go ahead and apply these properties to specific questions. So let's kind of think about how we want to remember these. Recall from the properties or our laws of exponents. If you have a to the x times it by a to the y, then that is simply going to be a to the x plus y. That's very similar to what we see here. And if we take a to the x divided by a to the y, that's going to be a to the x minus y, which is also going to be very similar there. So the laws of exponents and the properties for multiplying and dividing complex numbers look very similar. So that's one way that we can go about remembering that. The last one here with number three is we just have to recall the pro a property of periodic functions. And we said that f of x plus p is going to be equal to f of x so long as the period is p. And so we know that both, we know that the cis is really going to be the sine and the cosine. Both of those functions have a period of 2 pi k, where k is an element of z, and therefore if we have this form of the cis, then of course it can be very simply put as cis theta. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples here. Say, for example, that z sub 1 is equal to 1 plus i, and z sub 2 is equal to negative 3 over 2 plus the square root of 3 over 2 i. Now, with regards to the Cartesian solution, well, again, if we just go ahead and multiply these two together, then we just use FOIL. We make sure that we put the real parts together and the imaginary parts together, and you come up with this expression here. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and take a look at the polar solution, Let's go ahead and change z sub 1 into its polar form. Well, that's just going to be the square root of 2 cis of 45 degrees. z sub 2 is going to take a little bit more work because we need to go ahead and first find the modulus of that, which would be the square root of 3. And the argument of z sub 2 is going to be the inverse tangent of negative square root of 3 over 3. And we have to remember that being that we take a look, it could be in either the second or the fourth quadrant, but when we take a look at our original form here, we know that it's going to be in the second quadrant, and therefore we know that it's going to be 150 degrees. So therefore, z sub 2 is going to be the square root of 3 cis 150 degrees. Okay, so when we go ahead and multiply those two uh, particular complex numbers in its polar form, what we come up with is the square root of 2 cis 45, square root of 3 cis 150. Now, of course, the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is just going to be the square root of 6. And then this is going to be cis of 45 degrees plus 150 because we're multiplying those two polar numbers in their, compl in their complex numbers in their polar forms. And therefore, you come up with the square root of 6 cis of 195. What I invite you to do at this point is to go ahead and expand that and see whether or not you come up with the exact same solution there. Okay, so let's walk. Okay, and let's go ahead and continue now with an example of a quotient. So if I was to go ahead and take a look at the Cartesian solution of z sub 1 divided by z sub 2, uh, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 2 uh, so that I can go ahead and eliminate the complexity of my fraction. And then I need to go ahead and multiply by the conjugate of the denominator to rationalize the denominator. 
and therefore multiply it by negative 3 minus the square root of 3i to both numerator and denominator to come up with a simplified form of negative 3 plus the square root of 3 over 6 plus the quantity negative 3 minus the square root of 3i over 6. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at that, again, that's pretty long. If we go ahead and take a look at the polar solution, the polar solution, of course, is just going to be the square root of 2, cis 45, over the square root of 3, cis 150. And again, if we go ahead and use property number 2, that's just simply going to be the square root of 6 over 3, cis of 45 degrees, minus 150 degrees, which is the square root of, which is the square root of 6 over 3, cis of negative 105 degrees. And again, I go ahead and invite you to go ahead and check to see that both of these are equivalent values. Okay, so just to wrap up again, when we go ahead and take a look at multiplying and dividing complex numbers, we know how to do that using the Cartesian form of the complex numbers. If we go ahead and change the complex number to its, to its equivalent polar form, we can go ahead and use these particular properties to go ahead and perform multiplication and division. And we also have certain ways that we can go ahead and remember what those properties are. So again, we'll take a look at the proofs in class, and we'll go ahead and take a look at any questions you may have about multiplying and dividing complex numbers. So until then, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.